Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. Lord, we thank you for blessing us. We thank you for another privilege. We thank you for forgiving us. We thank you for molding and shaping us. We thank you for another privilege to come before you. We thank you for another Bible study. We thank you for another chance to hear from you through your word, Father God. We thank you for blessing us, Father God, to be obedient to your word. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us tonight. Forgive us for our sins that we will hear from you. Mold and shape our lives, Father God, that we will depend on you. Bless us, Father God, that we will not get beyond ourselves and think that we are more than what we really are. Bless us tonight as we speak through your word, as we listen to your word, that your word will be clear, that life will roll on just a little while longer, that we can tell men, women, boys, and girls about the goodness of God. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for making a way. Thank you. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You ought to join us at your house, in your car, at your job. You ought to join us and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for joining us here tonight for our Bible study. We begin a brand new book of the Bible tonight in the New Testament. In the New Testament. It is, it is in the New Testament right now. After Titus, right before Hebrews, you will find a little book there called Philemon or Philemon. Some have called it Philemon, other has called it Philemon. We will say Philemon for tonight. Look at let's look at Philemon. It's behind the book of Titus, in front of the book of uh, Hebrews. Behind the book of Titus, in front of the book of Hebrews, we're looking at the word. Philemon, the name Philemon, and that's only one chapter, one chapter. And so since we're having technical difficulties, we're going to do the first two verses for tonight and see can we rearrange our technology for tomorrow or next week. Let's look at Philemon. Philemon is in, in, the, in the New Testament. The book is Philemon. Let's look at the first two verses. It covers the first pericope. Uh, we were intending to do verses 1 through 7 on tonight, but let's let, let's do the first two verses so we can get past our technical dis difficulties tonight. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved friend and fellow laborer, to the beloved Apopha and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. The Apostle Paul is writing here again, and usually he would say, I, Paul, and sometimes he would say, I, Paul, the Apostle, or I, the Apostle Paul, but he chooses not to say that tonight in the first two verses of Philemon. He is talking to people who are in house churches. They are in churches that are in the house. They are in churches that are arranged in such a way that they go from house to house. When you look at the book of Acts, you will find out that the churches had two meeting places. One was the houses, and the other was the temple. 
And as we look at the book of Philemon tonight, we're looking at a letter that Paul wrote to Philemon. And as he wrote this letter to Philemon, Philemon, one of the reasons why he does not say Paul the apostle is because he is making a plea. Paul is making a plea. Paul, the apostle Paul, the great apostle Paul, he is making an appeal. He doesn't use a title. He calls himself a prisoner. So when we look at this, we find the Apostle Paul in the book of Philemon, he calls himself a prisoner. He is a twofold prisoner. Number one, he is a prisoner that's locked up in prison. Mm -mm. He's a prisoner because he is in jail. The Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, is locked up in prison. So he is a prisoner because he has chains on him. Remember in the book of Colossians, he says, remember my chains. What he's saying is, remember my chains, remember the fact that I'm locked up. Remember the fact that I'm locked up and I have chains on me, I'm locked up because I have issues, I'm locked up, I am in prison. The Apostle Paul is in prison. So the first reason why he calls himself a prisoner is because Paul is actually in prison. He's locked up. He is writing from a Roman prison. He is writing from a Roman jail. And I've said many times before, if it was you writing from a jail cell with a death sentence, would you be thinking about writing to us? <laughs> would you think about writing to the Colossians church? So Paul here is writing to the church at Colossae. He's writing a letter to one of the members of the church of Colossae, and that member is Philemon. It is believed by many theologians that the book of Philemon was written to Philemon because Onesimus was a runaway slave. And Onesimus had come in touch with Paul. Paul had, had reached Onesimus by way of the Holy Spirit. He had reached Onesimus by way of Jesus Christ. So now Onesimus, who was once a runaway slave, slave is now a saint for the Lord. Look at God. So he's now a saint of the Lord. Onesimus is. Paul, that used to be Saul, who used to kill people who believed in Jesus Christ, is now a follower of Jesus Christ. He's in prison. Onesimus has met Paul, and many believe he met him in prison. Onesimus, who's a runaway slave, was guilty of running away because those who were wealthy had the right to use their wealth to, to have slaves. Onesimus had run away. He meets Paul. Paul ministers to him. Many believe while they were in prison, Paul ministered to him. So now Paul writes a letter. He writes it to his slave master, who is Philemon. And he's writing this request, and he doesn't use his title. He doesn't use the normal uh, designation for himself. He doesn't use the normal style. He, he doesn't use the normal tag. He doesn't even use his normal name, the Apostle Paul. But what he does do, he says, I, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. So first of all, he's a prisoner because he's locked up in jail, because he's in prison. Number two, he's a prisoner because not only is he locked up, but he's a prisoner of Jesus Christ. And because he's a prisoner of Jesus Christ, he's a twofold prisoner. 
The first thing is he's locked up in jail. Second thing is the reason why he's locked up in jail is because he's a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Isn't that something? He's a prisoner of Jesus Christ. He's locked up in prison. And because he's a prisoner of Jesus Christ, they locked him up because he preached Jesus. My question to you today is, why are you a prisoner? If you're not a prisoner of Jesus Christ, you're a prisoner of something. There's something that holds us bound. Is it a generational curse? Is it our attitude? Is it, is it uh, where we've been that keeps holding us back? We are prisoners into and for something or somebody. Paul says, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ. And he says, Timothy, our brother. So what Paul does, he tells them that he's writing a book. And then he tells them that Peter, I mean, I'm sorry, that Timothy is present with him. What this does is, as he make his appeal, as he makes his request, as he makes his plea, this gives him more credibility that Timothy is in support of this letter. Paul is writing a letter, and he's writing a letter, doesn't call his name Apostle Paul. He doesn't use his tag. He doesn't use the usual style. He doesn't use his usual designation. He just says, Paul the prisoner. And he says prisoner because he brings it down to the level of Onesimus. He wants uh, Philemon to know that I'm like Onesimus. I've been caught in wrongdoing. Of course, Paul was caught in wrongdoing, but the wrongdoing didn't get him locked up. The right doing is what got him locked up. So he says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother. And he classifies Timothy as one who's also the brother. So he says, to Philemon, our beloved friend and fellow laborer. He's writing a letter to Philemon. He's writing a letter to, to beg. He's writing a letter to plead another man's case. He's writing a letter to make a request. So when you write a letter to somebody, you want to begin by getting their attention and, and making sure that, first of all, you know that they are beloved of you. Your beloved brother. To my beloved brother, my beloved friend, my fellow fellow laborer. So he's writing a letter to his beloved brother. He's writing a letter to his beloved friend. He's writing a letter to his fellow yokeman in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Theologians believe that Philemon was a rich man who had slaves. Theologians believe that Philemon was the slave master of Onesimus. Onesimus had run away so Paul is trying to get him back in. Paul is trying to get him back in the door. So he doesn't use his title, Paul the Apostle, or the Apostle Paul. Rather, he uses the title prisoner to make sure that Philemon knows, man, I'm on the same level as Onesimus is. It would be so much better if we were always put ourselves in the position of others. It would always be good for us to witness or beg or plead somebody's case as we put ourselves in a position of others. We have to get on their level. So Paul says, I'm a prisoner. He calls him his beloved brother. He calls him his beloved brother. He says to Philemon, my dear friend, my fellow worker, my fellow laborer, He's my, you're my dear friend. And this word friend is rendered my dear friend, my beloved friend, my fellow worker. Now, not only does Paul put, him, put himself on the level of Onesimus, a runaway slave, a prisoner, somebody deserved to be locked up. He also put himself on the same level as the person he's writing the letter to. 
if you're going to get through to somebody, you can't be pious. People don't listen when you're pious. If you're going to make a difference in your letter, in your speech, you have to be willing to get on the level of those who need to hear you. So he says to us tonight, you are my fellow brother. You are my fellow worker. You are my fellow laborer. You are my loved one. I'm Paul. I'm your friend. I want you to know I'm your friend. I just want to let you know tonight that we have to be on the same level as others. We have to make sure that we are there. And we have to make sure that we don't stand piously above others. He says, to my beloved, Aphia. Aphia, and some may pronounce it a different way, but I'm going to call it Aphia tonight. Aphia, Aphia herself is, is one who theologians believe was the wife of Philemon. And so he writes a letter to Aphia, and he says to her, look, I respect you also. I'm writing a letter to you also. He says, I'm writing a letter to you. So what, what we understand is that if she is his wife, then she has some influence on the plea. She has some influence on how it's looked upon. She has some influence because many times women's hearts are tenderly drawn toward criminals. Women can see the need for forgiveness, especially when it's not something against them. So, so he says to Aphia, I'm writing this letter to you too. He wants her to help influence Philemon. Then he says, Occupus, Occupus, my fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. He says, Occupus, and, and theologians believe that Occupus was the son of Philemon. And here we go again, as, as Aphia had some influence, Occupus had influence also. And if you remember when we talked about Colossians, we, we mentioned the name Archippus. The reason being is because it's all tied together. Paul writes this letter to the church at Colossae. He writes this letter to Philemon, who has a house church. And when he writes this letter, in, in Colossians, he mentioned some of the same names we're mentioning tonight, such as Archippus. He calls Archippus a fellow soldier in the army of the Lord. We ought to always look to encourage fellow soldiers in the army of the Lord. Not only that, we ought to always look to encourage each other. So Archippus ought to be encouraging Paul. Paul ought to be encouraging him. And Philemon should be encouraged by Paul also. So Paul writes the letter and he encourages everybody. If it is so... Then he encouraged the whole household. It is also believed that Aphia has a great part in making the decision because she handled the day-to-day -day responsibilities of the slave. In other words, you had Philemon. You had Aphia. And you had Archippus, and they all handled the ongoings of slaves. So he addresses all three of them. You notice he doesn't use any highfalutin terms. He, not, he doesn't even get on his apostolic paddle, uh, uh, soapbox. Because you don't get in by coming in saying, I'm the preacher. I'm the pastor. I am the apostle. You get in the door by 
humbling yourself. This is what Paul does. And it is believed that they had a house church in such a way that this house church was one that was ran very smoothly by the three of them. Finally, in verse number three, Paul says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He salutes them in the normal Paul-like fashion. He salutes them, and when he salutes them, he says, Grace and peace from the from God our Father in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, grace to you. He says, peace to you. You see, what we have to understand is, we are not only looking for the peace of God, but we are also looking for the peace with God. It is important that we notice the, the order of which he says it. He says grace first. This word grace is favor. This word grace is unmerited, undeserved favor. It is favor that we should not have, but God gives it to us. This word grace is a way that God expresses himself to mankind he expresses his love to all of mankind. He says, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, the Lord Jesus, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, this is his normal greeting. He greets you. And let me tell you, you ought to have a normal greeting when you greet people. You ought to say, hello, how you doing? Hello, God bless you. And people ask you, how you doing? I'm excellent. I'm doing well. We have to make sure that we carry God everywhere we go because God is with us everywhere we go. Grace be unto you. This is identical to the way Paul oftentimes greets people. The word peace express spiritual, a spiritual state. Peace is not just rest. Peace is not just quietness. Peace is not just tranquility. Peace is also the peace of God. It, it means to be in total agreement with God. It is a spiritual state that de denotes a proper relationship between God and man. Where there's no peace, there's no proper relationship between God and man. God is here, we are here, and God is here, and we are there. And as long as we don't see the peace of God, as long as we don't have the peace of God, as long as we don't have peace with God, we will never, ever, ever have communion with God. So we have to make sure that we understand that peace is the normal, is, is the normal spiritual expression that demote, denotes a relationship that we have with God, that we ought to want to have with him. It is the effect of only grace of God. Peace cannot be seen. Peace cannot be felt. Peace cannot be dealt with other than through the grace of God. That's why he says grace. So look at the order. He says grace first. Then he says peace. We look for peace. But we have to have grace first. It says to us tonight that this is an effect. Peace, peace is an effect of our grace that we get from God. It is the effect of, of grace that comes from God. It is the effect of the grace of God. There will be no peace apart from grace. Where there's no grace, there will never be peace. Where there's no love, there will never be peace. The peace with God is a judiciary, judiciary term. It is a, a courtroom term. It is a matter of, of coming to reality with your faith. It comes by means of faith. 
The peace with God comes by faith. It is a, a term that, that is seen in the courtroom. We have peace when we declare it innocent. And the only way we can be declared innocent is through Jesus Christ. Finally, the peace of God. The peace of God is what we need by way of the Holy Spirit. We can only have the peace of God by way of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And if we're going to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we must have Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Look what he says, verse number 3, Philemon chapter 1, which is there's only one chapter in Philemon. So there's not a chapter one. We call it chapter one, but it's the only chapter. In order to have a one, you must have a two. So in Philemon, verse number three, it says, grace to you in peace from God, our father, the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, you can't have peace. You can't have grace without Jesus Christ. If you're listening to me tonight, in this little short message, I want to present to you, Jesus Christ. If you're going to have peace, if you're going to have peace with God, you need Jesus. If you're going to have the peace of God, you need Jesus. Where there's no Jesus, there's no peace. We have God's grace, and that grace ushers in peace. If we do not, if we do not have Jesus Christ, we can't have peace. God's grace is available. Jesus is the love that God has offered to us on Calvary. I want to say to you today, you can have peace right now. You don't have to have turmoil. You don't have to have chaos. You don't have to have destruction in your life. You can have the peace of God, and you can have peace with God tonight. You just need to trust Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. The door, of the, Christ, the door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Don't you want that peace? Aren't you tired of chaos? Don't you want the peace of God, the peace with God? Don't you want to, to get to know him in a very real way? I recommend Jesus. Jesus the Christ. The one who died over 2,000 years ago. The one they buried in a borrowed tomb. I offer to you Jesus today. You can get to know him today. Just trust him as your savior. Believing the story that over 2,000 years ago, they killed him. They buried him. But early that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. The door of the church is open. You can be saved right here, right now today. Would you know him? Would you like to know him? Would you like to get to know him? Just repeat after me in this little simple prayer to invite him into your life. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose again. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe that you. if you prayed this prayer, we believe that you're born again. We believe that you're going to heaven when you die. We believe that the only thing you need to do is get involved in great ministry in a good Bible teaching church. And I recommend the New Beginning Church, where you can be saved and then you can join the church and get involved. You can do so. If you've received Christ today in this broadcast, please let me know. Inbox me and let me know you received Jesus Christ as your Savior. And if you have... You have dedicated your life or rededicated your life today and you want to be a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, let me know. Inbox me and let me know. And if you want to be a member, 
of the New Beginning Church, just let me know, and we'll, glad, we'll be glad to take you in and be a member and celebrate with you. Again, thank you for joining us tonight. It is now offering time. It is now offering time. Would you like to be a part of our offering on tonight? It is offering time. You can give your offering in one of three ways. You can give by way of Cash App. Our cash tag is dollar sign NBC Souls. Cash tag is dollar sign NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can give by way of mail. You can mail your offering, your tithes, and your love offering, whatever you want to mail. You can mail it by way of P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas 77549. You can uh, do one of these ways of giving. And I want to thank you tonight for joining us for our Bible study. We're here every Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. every Wednesday night. Uh, thank you for joining us on Sunday morning. Please continue to do so at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school and at 10.45 a.m. for our Sunday wish worship service. Thank you so much for joining us and being a part of our service here on tonight. Uh, please continue, sisters and brothers, please continue with us. Please continue with us in our Bible, our Bible schedule for our Bible listening. Please continue with our Bible listening. Uh, we, um, we're in the book of, of, of Leviticus. We're in the book of Leviticus. Please, please continue with us with our Bible listening and journaling down what God has to say to you. We are looking uh, to continue to pray for you. We are praying for, for us. Uh, this is Nicholas Kincaid. Mm -hmm. We're praying for Nicholas Kincaid. We're lifting Nicholas Kincaid up, and uh, we're, we're praying for him as he's battled, battled with his sickness. We want to pray for him on tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Please, ma'am, please, sir, note that this broadcast will be delayed coming on because of our technical difficulties. But please go back and listen. Please share the video. And please, whatever you do, hit the share button. Hit the notification button and make sure that you know when we're coming on and uh, share Jesus Christ with others. Thank you so much. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we come now thanking you for your word. We thank you, Father God, that we realize that we are prisoners for you. Thank you, Father. Even though we're not locked up anywhere, you allowed us to be counted among the saints of God. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us. We ask you to keep us. We ask you, Father God, to wrap your arms around us. We come now lifting up Nicholas Kincaid, Father. We ask you to heal him. Touch him. Bless him. Bless his grandmother, Miss Vivian, Father God. We ask you to bless their lives. We ask you to heal him, Father God, and touch his life. We know you as the great physician. We ask you to heal him and show up as a great physician, Father God. We realize that you have answers that doctors don't have. We ask you to show forth your power, your majesty, and your glory. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we leave this place that we would never, ever leave your presence. We ask you, Father God, to keep us, bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, "In I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. John chapter 12, verse 32. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Be blessed.